One, two, three, accuracy, third. One, one two, accuracy, third. That would make more sense. Uh, Hi, Rex. Hi, <laughs> D-Day. What do we got going on today? Well, today, we have drunk Beth with us in studio. Hi, Beth. But I'm not with you. You are with me. I'm looking at you. No, but I mean, when you introduce this episode, I'm not with you guys. The three of us can just talk without introducing drunk Beth. Hi, it's, it's D-Day Rex and drunk Beth, and we can talk about Zeno in the episode, and then we can go into the episode. Yeah, we. I, I think we've set it up in previous episodes where it's pretty clear that, that we're recording the intro separately. We can record whatever y- you want. I'm going to cut it together the way I want to. <laughs> <laughs> love that. I, I love yeah. you, Beth. <laughs> But why don't you guys tell me about Zeno? I met him. He seemed kind of cute. He seemed kind of crazy. He seemed really clean cut for as big of a scumbag as he sounds like after listening to hours and hours of his stories. So so the picture that will go along with this episode, and I believe you've seen it already, is Zeno circa 2003, 2004 with a trihawk. The original Zeno that I met had a mohawk spiked up as high as he could spike it with his hands. I haven't met Relay, who was also with him when you guys recorded this. It's their partners. He's been volunteering in DPW, and she volunteers in DPW and... Uh, Initially, it was ESD. ESD. What does ESD stand uh, for? Emergency Services Division. Okay. Or is it department? Uh, Division or department. There are medics. There are paramedics. And also the fire service. Yeah, so she's like a first responder. Yeah, uh, she was dispatch for them, so she was sending out all of the medic and the fire calls. And that's why she's Relay. She is a Relay. We got some great stories out of Relay as well as from Zeno, but Relay we're going to have to save for a future episode. Relay is who will be piping in when Relay pipes in, and let's hear from Zeno. I, I realize that the two of you have uh, very similar tattoos. I claim that I had the idea first, <laughs> but he executed first, so I had to get a metric ruler on my forearm. We both have rulers on our forearms. Yeah, and since I just use mine as a universal measure, it doesn't matter if I have additional tick marks. <laughs> See, I actually work for a living uh, in the desert, so I actually need accurate measurements. Ladies and gentlemen, the first accuracy third departmental pissing contest. <laughs> <laughs> I've already opted out. This is great. Um, so, out in the desert, around Burning Man, um, in the hills and whatnot, there's a lot of really interesting, weird little spots, including hot springs and abandoned mines and mines that are not abandoned. Um, one not, of the- that, not that anyone should go looking for these things. You will get your ass arrested and deported out of Black Rock City if you do. Right. Yes, you can only do this in the off season. And even then, it's a really bad idea because your car might catch on fire and no one will know where you are. <laughs> yeah, it is It is empty out there when there are people out there. The simplest little problems that we completely take for granted in civilization become life-threatening within a matter of minutes. Yep. <laughs> it is amazing to watch it happen. I had gone out for the last work weekend of the season because I can only get so much time off work but I wanted to go there for the last hurrah. So I took a weekend off after coming back from the event and went back out and met a girl. And I was like, hey, there's this really neat abandoned mine out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she, you know, she she made googly eyes at me and I made googly eyes at her. And uh, we, we did sort of the right things. We got an igloo full of water and we told people where we were going. And then I went out and did some donuts on Playa and, and went out. And unfortunately, um, took a wrong turn, went past the gold mine, and was like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this road just kind of loops around. We can come at it from the other side. And so we were doing that. We were going down a particular road, and I was like, no, 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 don't like this road. I'm going to go back to the, the last turnoff. And as I was making a, a little three-point turn, a bunch of black smoke started coming out from underneath the hood. Oh, no. Um, and literally within about 30 seconds, the entire cab was in flame. So, yeah, me and uh, her name was Canada. Exited the car pretty quickly. Oh, no. Which is, I mean, it's, it's 30 seconds. It's I got some blankets and, and, and the water jug, oh, uh, okay. which had spilled in the back seat after uh, doing donuts. Probably during doing donuts. <laughs> because you had just filled a cooler with water. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were like, we're going to the desert. We're going to bring five gallons of water because that's smart. 
Well, not so much. Um, so I chose that moment to sit down on the ground and hug my knees and rock slowly um, and mutter fuck to myself. Uh, I think that's a lot like of a times. smart strategy. Yeah, it, it didn't do much for the confidence of my uh, team member. <laughs> but it so, does help you get some of your own perspective on the event that you're dealing with. I was doing a lot of thinking. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of introspection. Um, I couldn't quite externalize uh, the thought process that was going on. So I think it, overall that was the best course of action ultimately but it didn't look very good at the time so after that kind of uh wandered to the top of the nearest hills to try to see what i could see uh turned on my phone which had about four percent battery left because i knew there wasn't any cell coverage but i figured it would be the stupidest stupidest death ever if by some random strange chance there was cell coverage and i never checked right so checked there was not um, and so it was night, so no one was going to be missing us and no one was going to be looking for us for quite a while. So we just kind of sat there and told jokes for hours. Um, tried to get some sleep. Woke up in the morning and, uh, you know, we're checking the time. We're like, okay, they haven't done morning meeting yet. Still not missing us. Once they do morning meeting, people will start to get a little suspicious. It'll be another like hour and a half, two hours before they're like, oh, fuck. And Got morning it. meeting is at what time? I believe it was at 7 o'clock. Okay. But it's it's plenty bright before then. Oh, and, yeah, and yeah. it's just going to start getting warmer right. from like 7.30, 7.45. I wanted to do like a cutaway to explain about deaths in the Black Rock Desert. And I was like, oh, it'll be fun. And then I read all these stories about like kids dying. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for stories about deaths in the Black Rock Desert. And I just found a bunch about deaths in Death Valley. Uh-huh. Every couple of years, tourists drive somewhere, car breaks down, and there's just hundreds and hundreds of miles of desert, and it gets baking, baking hot, and people die. Like all their bones being found in a broken cab like 200 miles from the nearest road. And it's just like, ugh. The, the article that I read about it was called Death by GPS. Oh, Jesus. And they wanted to remind everyone that your GPS doesn't work out there. Your iPhone doesn't know where you are. Your GPS doesn't know where you are. Don't trust it. I think the reason we don't see more of that in the Black Rock Desert is because the Black Rock Desert is literally in the middle of nowhere. Death Valley is There's close stuff to Los around Angeles. It. It's yeah. close to Las Vegas. People go there. It's a national park. Yeah, the Black Rock Desert is close to garbage. Other deserts. <laughs> Some barren-ass mountains across which are other deserts. So we went to the top of the hill, um, and so in the DPW handbook, uh, at least it used to, I don't know if it still does actually, uh, there's some really basic survival skills, like breathe through your nose, not through your mouth, because there's more surface area in your mouth for water to evaporate, evaporate. from. Yeah. So we're, we're doing the things that you're supposed to do. I learned that from the Fremen of Arrakis. <laughs> <laughs> Dune was the proto survival. Game. Yeah, no, that's, yes, yes, that's yes. my playa card. Pre Mad Max, like <laughs> Dune was the real genesis of yeah. the DPW and the and Iraq before yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> turns out. <laughs> What's going on with with your car at this point? Is that still it is, smoldering? Uh, so it burned for a while. The tires popping were loud and neat. <laughs> um, the aluminum actually melted and formed puddles and rivulets cars have mirrors and whatnot and in the uh, explosions slash settling slash you know just heat and cooling uh, a lot of the mirrors had shattered and so there are chunks of you know mirrors spread around the, the carcass of the car so I just gathered, uh, gathered one of those and uh, went up to the hilltop we kind of scoped out the area and there was a, a road you know what you do is you catch the sun and uh, kind of try to angle it such that anyone who's on the road if they're you know, wandering uh, eyes happened to point in your direction, they could maybe see some uh, shiny, flashy light from the hilltop. Um, now, that doesn't help you at that moment. They're not going to stop what they're doing. They are driving in the middle of nowhere. They obviously have something that they're doing, um, going to work or uh, hiding bags of meth. Um, so we're up there. Um, I'm, I'm doing this thing, and then I hear some scuffling behind me and kind of panicky noises. And I turn around to see that, without telling me, she had started a signal fire in the scrub brush on the hill behind me. And that it had gotten <laughs> no. a little bit out of control. <laughs> well, they're going to find you. And 
arrest us. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. But, oh, no. But you don't have to die in the desert now. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Um, but, yeah, so uh, I was in uh, shoes with no socks, and she was in Crocs, and we were stomping on this fire <laughs> uh, trying to get it out. And I was like, why the fuck did you not tell me you were lighting a signal fire? And she said, well, your reaction to the fire last night wasn't great, so I didn't really want to bother you too much and have you go catatonic again. And I was like, point taken, but Those are very good fires. <laughs> so anyway, we got that out, and we're sitting up there and, you know, signaling some more. We see this just broken down, just ugly, ugly looking wild horse. We're like, oh, that is a sorry looking desert beast. And he like wanders around and kind of looks at us and we look at it. And then we start wondering, huh, is a horse blood too salty for hydration? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what the Maasai do. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, we were exploring all options at this point. We're like, well, I don't know, we could get something sharp. He, he doesn't look like he has much fight in him. Right. Uh, and he wanders down this little crevasse and like, ah, okay, whatever. Can you choke a horse? I don't think you can well, choke a horse. Well, I don't know if you can choke a horse. Can you choke a horse? You, you have to have really big hands. You have mm -hmm. to get your hands around. Oh, I was going to use my like thighs. You weren't going to use your thighs? <laughs> Lock ankles? Just squeeze? <laughs> All right. Now, so I'm the weird one. Great. <laughs> Fuck you guys. So uh, about, uh, I'd say like 35, 40 minutes later, the horse comes out of that little crevasse and kind of wanders off. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting note. Okay. I'm going to go back to signaling at this uh, roadway, which I, I might add, like we can see little plumes of dust rising from. But as I'm sure you're familiar, the distances out there are really hard to gauge. Oh, yeah. So there's no way that we're walking towards this road off in the distance during daylight. So we're kind of developing a plan like, okay, at night, that's cool. We might be able to make it to that road. Which is either 2 or 12 miles away. Yeah. It could be 20 as far as I know. I mean, we were up on a hill and it was really far away. Sure. And then we see this little herd of deer. I go, like, oh, cute little deer buddies, looking much better than the horse. Obviously, had their shit together way more than the horse, and uh, they come from a completely different direction. And yet, they uh, they go back down that same little valley that the horse did. At which point, uh, Canada picks up and says, "Huh, those, those are very large mammals surviving in the desert, and, and, and they need hydration." And so we made a, an agreement that if those uh, little deer buddies came back out of that little valley in 35, 40 minutes, say, uh, we were going to go for a little walk. And sure enough, they did. And sure enough, we did. So we left a note on the car, date, time, direction, names, all the stuff you're supposed to, and uh, an arrow towards the, uh, the valley and, and took a little hike down the valley. And we came to this fantastic site, which was uh, uh, kind of like a dug out little pond area, but it was dry. There's a hose coming out of the ground aimed at the little dugout part. It was obviously for uh, ranchers to water their herd or something, uh -huh. but the hose was not doing anything. So we followed the hose uh, back up into the mountainside. Uh, there's a bunch of brambles. We're tearing at the brambles. There's no visible way to like turn on any there's a faucet there's no i have no idea how this shit works um so canada got frustrated and quiet which was uh scary i was like oh, this is the beginning of where she just drinks my blood okay well here we go she'd been a trooper the entire time and uh i was like well uh, no, hold on hold on I, I, there's bugs <laughs> i'm getting bitten by bugs well, that's a good thing so let's yeah. keep going down the valley a little bit they keep going down the valley a little bit, and lo and behold, there's another one full of water, and not only that, but running water. Not only that, but the hose was up out of the water and running. Nice. So oh, beautiful. The, the stagnation issues and, and, and whatnot are, are, are not so bad. Arsenic. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we were, we were willing to ingest some, some bad things at this point. So uh, we take out our three beers that we had saved because uh, we didn't want to drink them because, you know, your beer doesn't hydrate you and we celebrated so we opened the beers we're like, hey, we got water, we can drink now. <laughs> Let's get as shitty as a beer and a half can get us. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and, while you're dehydrated and haven't eaten in a day yeah. and stressed out, is probably fairly shitty. Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty good, yeah. So we took our, our shoes off and stuck our feet in the water and uh, started uh, really kind of nesting. We were like, ah, oh, yeah, we can totally like build a little campfire over there and like we can fight off the coyotes with these sticks. <laughs> <laughs> it was like if there's like 30 of them, uh, they'll probably take us. But you know, we could probably take down a few of them before they uh, before they swarm us. Mm -hmm. 
and um, make an example out of one of them. Oh yeah, yeah. Scare off where the rest. Where its head is a hat. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty happy, and then uh, we heard an uh, engine and uh, a little orange flag waving in the bushes kind of came up close to us, and uh, lo and behold, the uh, gold mine that we had passed before was surveying the area for uh, Native American sites of interest so that they could blow up everything around it. And oh. so a surveyor came up, and Canada had soot all over her face, blue hair, kind of raggedy clothes, and uh, this poor surveyor um, was on his lunch break <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, and not, not expecting a, a, a panicky but smiling from ear to ear blue-haired, soot-covered hippie to stick her head into his passenger side window and say, hi! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he dropped his sandwich <laughs> and uh, eventually uh, we we're like, yeah, if you could, you know, get us to a phone, that'd be great. And he's like, Ugh, yeah. we're like, but you work for the gold mine, right? And he's like, yeah, the gold mine. They're not going to like you. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay, well, but I mean, we can use our phone, right? And he's like, I'll, uh, I'll just let me talk to them. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? Okay. So he drives us to the gold mine. Uh, we wait outside. He comes out, and he's like, okay, you can go in now. We go in, and there's a little receptionist. And he's like, yeah, so these guys had a little car fire. And I ran into him when I was uh, on my lunch break. And she just deadpan, staring straight at him, said, well, why didn't you leave him there? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then she looks over his shoulder at us and goes, oh, oh, uh, honey, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she was not kidding. <laughs> um, that is how I discovered that uh, gold miners are really are only there to just extract money from the ground. Oh they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. No um, fucks. No I don't... fucks. So fortunately, my phone still had uh, I think two percent, and I managed to get Cobra Commander's phone number out of it, and um, they let me use the phone. So I called his personal cell because I didn't have the the uh, office number, and he answered and said, "Hello." I said, "Hey, how's it going?" And he said, oh, pretty good. Uh, who am I speaking with? And I said, Zeno. He said, oh, cool. And I said, uh, so uh, how's your day been? And he said, oh, you know, strikes and gutters. Yours. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm, yeah, much the same. A little, few more gutters than strikes. But I was wondering if you knew anyone with, like, a car that could, uh, I don't know, give me a ride somewhere. He's like, yeah, I think I might know a few people. Had they, they had, had they noticed you were gone? Yes. Oh, very much so. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, there, are, there are protocols um, that, once they get started, um, escalate very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it wasn't to the point where they were flying air, uh, airplanes, but that is part of the protocol. Uh, yeah, it starts with just kind of they, they go where uh, where you say you were going, which we didn't get to, and then they kind of like, you know. Fan out. They, they, they look around. Um, after a certain point, they'll notify the sheriff. And that's when the sheriff goes to you know local bars and establishments saying, hey, when you were driving to the gold mine from Winnemucca or wherever the hell you were driving to in your big old truck, um, did you notice any flashes from any nearby hills, which is the mirror that I was flashing at them? And that's when the people sitting in the bar that have had you know, several beers and a couple shots go, oh, yeah, I do remember a little flashing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's a long game, and the payoff is so far in the future. It's <laughs> very demoralizing when you're doing it because you're like, this is not going to help until like two or three days from now. Wow. But you got to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, how long was this whole ordeal? Not long, about 14 hours. So, you didn't get to drinking your own pee? No. Did no, no. you get to drinking Canada's pee? No. That's probably best. That was second date. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Although the the uh, the expectations for the second date were placed fairly high, it, it's funny that no, that Zeno knows so much about the uh, missing persons protocol. <laughs> yeah, it's really telling. Especially was that last year? Was that last year? I believe that was last year. Yeah. yeah. There's there's another story. Oh well, let's hear this yeah. other story. Okay. Yeah, missing persons is number two. Um. Apologies, I need to consider my audience. DPW does strike where we t take down all of our stuff, put it into containers and trucks and get it all stored. But there's still work that we have to do while we're not living on Playa. So we actually moved to a trailer park in Gerlach, which is uh, interesting. But uh, so we're in the, in the process of moving all of our stuff from Pla Playa to Gerlach when this happened. And, uh, so I, and I work in, in the office, so I'm always by my radio. The um, office in Gerlach. The office in Gerlach, yeah. That's great. I had been jonesing to go back to Reno and just have a shower and then another shower and then a bath and then a shower. Do you realize that nobody that doesn't spend weeks at a time 
out in the middle of nowhere on Playa ever says the sentence that they were just jonesing to go back to Reno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Reno? Yeah, man, they got indoor plumbing. <laughs> so much of it. You just push a button and it gets cold. I wanted Tino to come with me and he, uh, he was like, no, I really, really want to stay and do more shade stuff because they really need me and I like doing this work. And I was like, great, okay. And then um, I didn't see him for a little while, for a day. And uh, and then I heard over the radio, is it, has anybody seen Zeno? But then it started to escalate a little bit more quickly than I thought it would, because uh, I didn't realize, I think, that you had had a previous missing persons experience. <laughs> I, I could have sworn I, I, I usually lead with that story. That's like one of my, you know, first string stories. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the day previous, a friend of mine who had been hit by a bus in Oakland and had like uh, facial reconstruction surgery, had just finished her lawsuit and recovered fully. It had been about three years of this lawsuit where the city of Oakland was actually like dragging her family's name through the mud and like really just trying to paint her as the most terrible person in the world because she got hit by a bus and wanted money for it. Day classy Oakland. Yeah. So she had actually just gotten her settlement and had immediately come out to the desert and it was her birthday. Um, so we decided to uh, drop acid and run around all night, driving out in the uh, deep playa, and the truck got a little bit stuck on like a little rise. The uh, rear axle got itself on top of some dirt such that the rear wheels couldn't get purchased. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just kind of trying to rock it back and forth and trying to do the things you do to get a truck moving again. And uh, she wrote a note saying, hey, well, we left the truck, we're going this way. And she put it underneath the windshield while I was trying to like dig out the rear axle. So there's a note on the truck saying, hey, we got stranded, and this is where we went. I'm like, hey, I've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, after some more digging, we did get the truck unstuck and you know went about our merry way. And uh, in the morning, I had not slept, and I was like, ah. And it's my friend's birthday. She's finally made it to the desert after years and years and years. And she's like, all I want to do is like go to Frog Pond for my birthday. And I was like, okay, we can do that. So I went to Frog Pond. And I guess someone saw the truck when we were in the back pond away from the truck and saw the note saying that we were <laughs> stranded. Oh, because you didn't take it off. Because I was not aware of it. And also, I figured, we're at Frog Pond. We're obviously not stranded. We're obviously at Frog Pond. Um... Come, yeah, if there's anything come look need. around Frog Pond before you start driving around the desert, panicking. Like you'd leave Frog Pond to go into the... I know, right? The, <laughs> there's yeah. a huge pool of water. It's disgusting, but it's water. <laughs> oh, you'll get hepatitis from drinking it, but like you won't die this week. <laughs> right. You'll People get, can live with hepatitis. You'll get hepatitis long, from Long, rich lives. <laughs> or lesions. Or the year of everybody like getting MRSA. Right. So I, I had my radio on me, and uh, we were kind of dozing, and I wasn't paying too much attention, but my name came up, and uh, I heard, like, oh, I guess we better mobilize a search party, and, you know, Frog Pond is outside the, the, the scope of where radios are supposed to work, so I was just, like, frantically saying, break, 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 like, lifting my radio, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I finally get through, and I'm like, no, 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 Zeno is fine. <laughs> Zeno is, don't, don't mobilize, stand down, stand down. But, of course, I got a very big and long ration of shit for uh, almost getting people mobilized again. But far less than you would have had they actually mobilized. You lucky. Yes. found you lounging single. at Frog Pond. <laughs> yep. The well, worst thing so about Frog Pond is going there to hang out, seeing all of the other people from all of the other teams hanging out there as well, just having a great time chatting each other up, like flirting, starting to hook up, drinking gallons upon yep. gallons of beer. <laughs> And no one ever gets out of Frog Pond. <laughs> it is fucking disgusting there. The urine can only improve conditions in Frog Pond. Yeah, there's a lot of strep. People get strep often. Yeah, it's gross. But there is... Which there means, I think, that they had had to put it in their mouths. Well, yeah, I mean, you yell <sighs> and people are splashing. I don't know. <sighs> but, so, there are other pools mm -hmm. at yeah. Frog Pond that many people don't know about, which is why me and my friend were back there was because when we got there, there was a very, very unhappy, unpleasant family with small children. 
Oh, no. Really insisting on being at Frog Pond and having good family time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So rather than, um, you know, hang out in front of these cheerful uh, locals, uh, we decided to go to the other pond, uh, which uh, I guess we should have left uh, another note on the track. <laughs> 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 but people wander off from work for a day all the time, and, and people don't freak out. It's just me. Not everybody has a history of right. vanishing. Not everyone has a tattoo of bad idea on their wrist with an arrow <laughs> always pointing at themselves. True. <laughs> Most people don't. I don't know if you guys know this. Burning Man's not cool anymore. Oh, we were I'm just not doing it to be cool. We were just at the BART station today. Yeah. We, so, someone, someone felt the need to come up behind us as we were leaving the, the BART paid area. A, a woman, just like out of the blue, because uh, Zeno's got a big patch on his back. Sure. And it's just like... Burning Man is just for rich white people, or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, obviously you haven't anymore? been, or if you did, you only hung out with your friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was thinking about San Francisco. San yeah. Francisco yeah, well, the two are, are getting people. very much conflated. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just tech bros everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so uh, They couldn't just ruin San Francisco. <laughs> They're they like, wait a minute, where are you guys going? Wait, where are you? why are you running away? Wait, I want to come. Uh, there's like that really annoying friend in high school that just did not get that you weren't actually their friend. Yeah. <laughs> just followed you around to all the parties. And like the second they walk into the party, everyone's, everyone rolls their eyes and goes, mm. fuck. Well, they can come, but they have to bring all their toys. They have to pay for right. everything, and they have to play by our rules. Their mom has to drive us to the pizza joint. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Google, come on in. But we want drones. We we want fifty foot flamethrowers. We want internet. If we could have all of your old bikes, that would be great. <laughs> it's nice because you know instead of the rest of DPW, where you're like, well, I guess Uncle Larry paid for this. The bike people can say, well, other Uncle Larry paid for this. Yep. <laughs> Rich Uncle Larry. Yeah. Rich Uncle and then the, <laughs> the drunk weird adult Uncle. uncle. <laughs> the weirdo uncle that just never quite got a job. Yeah. Oh, he's still wearing that hat. <laughs> hey, he's got two hats now. Yeah. So that's the one that he wears when he, when he doesn't want to be recognized. <laughs> yeah. Drunk Beth, please edit this out. We do still want to yes. interview Larry. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Drunk Beth. Thanks, Drunk Beth. Drunk Beth, who Drunk hates Beth. her nickname, Drunk Beth. Drunk Beth is um, a saint. Dandy pointed and... out the fact that she was exceptionally drunk one night isn't worth giving her a playa name. Oh, but, yeah, but, but playa but names her... are not like that. There's no, just no, random. I get it, yeah. but her displeasure in it completely outweighs the fact that, like, oh, I've been so irresponsibly drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, not yeah. just on Playa, but in, in my life as a human being mm -hmm. who should have known better. <laughs> and unfortunately, I wasn't there to give myself the nickname Drunk Bath! <laughs> well, my nickname is Zeno, and I got that from BBS's in 1992. So I got to pick it, and I showed up at Burning Man with a handle because I already was in a culture that had handles. Mm -hmm. Which is like underground, like hackery things. So I dodged that bullet. Playing names can be a real hassle. Yeah, no, I brought a friend of mine out there, and I named him Money Shot, and he did not <laughs> like it. He did not like it, but I like like anyone being restrained. You just want to tell them, dude, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Uh -huh. Just relax, buddy. Because if you fight it, it's just gonna get worse. <laughs> you think Money Shot is bad? We can go worse. Just <laughs> fucking accept it. Nose candy. Oh, no. Oh. Folks doing the wrong drugs on Playa. Hmm. Oh, that's sad. Well, it is sad, it's... but it's also a funny name. So, nice. sure. Is there mm. wrong drugs? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I've done them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're bad. Don't do them. So, I got asked once if I knew where to get any hua. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, is that pussy? And I said, I don't know. Could you tell me more about it? Is that like Marines? Like, do, do you want to know where the Marines are? And the guy was like, nah, man, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Do you know where we get any hua? And I was like, no, I, I really don't. I'm, I'm naked in Frog Pond with my friend, and you're a large man that just drove over the fence. And you're really scary, and you have a large Doberman, and you have a friend who's very scrawny who has one arm. <laughs> And is literally throwing a knife into the ground such that he wants to like get the pointy end down, 
but is failing every time. <laughs> no. Well, buddy, no. large, large, white-haired dude with the weird dog that's asking for the thing I don't know about. <laughs> Let's talk about this because my friends are freaking out right now and they don't want to let you know. All right, buddy, what do you think Hua is? And he's like, Nah, man, come on, Hua. And I was like, Well. I'm going to say, no, I don't know where to get it because I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, no, man. And we had an empty. (laughs) Well, okay. So we had a cooler that had some beer in it, but no ice. At which point his friend came up and was like, oh, you have this this cooler that that has a bunch of warm Budweiser. This is before DPW switched to Pabst. This is back in the day when we actually drank Budweiser. Yeah, it was bad. So he's like. Why don't you put your beer in my cooler? I got some ice. And we're like, no, 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 thank you, redneck. No, no, thank you. It's cool. Um, you know what? I, we were just about done. That's I think, downright presumptive. I think we're going to go. And, he, <laughs> hey, and he's hey, like, hey. that's like going into an orgy and going, hey, hey can I how use about your dildo, my butthole? <laughs> right? And so like, I'm like fuck, like, okay, my friends want to go. And the one-armed guy is like, hey, so why are you guys like not parked up? Next to the frog pond. And I'm like, well, you know, if you park next to it, it unsettles the dirt. And we're trying to pristine, you know, environment and trees, flora and fauna. And he's having none of it. He's like, no, fuck that. I own this place. And I'm like, I don't think you do. And he's like, no, no, I own this place. And he leaves and gets in his four-wheel drive truck and just drives over the fence and parks next to frog pond. And I'm like, oh, this is getting weird. (laughs) Okay. Uh, and he's like, hey, I heard that there's a, a, a pond around here where you can, like, you know, jump and actually dive in. Wait, he says this. He says this, yes. The guy who is the pretending guy. that he lives here. The, yes, the one-armed guy who just okay. drove over the fence, who has the friend who is asking for the hua. I assume they both want hua, but... <laughs> Did you ever find out what hua is? It's speed. It's speed. I mean, <laughs> duh. It's speed. <laughs> Now, I really wouldn't have known that had you. Oh, not okay, said well, that, so but. context is everything. When you're in the bumfuck Nevada and some rando comes up asking for something, <laughs> it is speed. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter if he says, "Do you got a dime? Do you got some grass? Do you have dirt? Do you have whatever the fuck comes after? Do you have what? that is speed? You got the mystery. So like, I I heard there's a, a place where you can dive in, and there's like a secondary pool right next to Frog Pond where it's deeper, and we'd actually rigged a little diving board and i was like cool yeah i'll i'll show you where this is while my friends who are naked and afraid get out really quickly and put their clothes on and like scurry off to their cars because <laughs> apparently something is happening now <laughs> apparently everyone's cool everything's fine but my friends are putting their clothes on very quickly so i show him the other pool and you know one-armed dude and so he gets up like on this diving board and dives in and pops back up and he starts just you know if okay all of you people in podcast land you have two arms except if you don't that's cool (laughs) um but if you have two arms and you're used to swimming with two arms just imagine if you're used to swimming with two arms then all of a sudden you had one arm taken away from you what would you do so he just like windmills his one (laughs) left arm that he does not know how to use he's just slapping the water really but like trying to get back to the side and I'm like, oh this, okay, oh, this is sad. And and he starts chanting, whatever does not kill me makes me stronger. Whatever does not kill me oh. makes me stronger. Whoa. Whatever does not kill me makes me stronger. And I'm like, okay, buddy, but if you want a hand, I'm right here. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean if you need a hand. I'm, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I was willing to help, and he did not accept my help. That's fine. He, he managed to muddle his way to the side, and by that point, my friends were close, and we're like, okay, we're going to leave now. And so we leave and go back to the work ranch. And we're like, wow, what a crazy story. Huh? So I talked to uh, the work ranch manager, who is also the properties manager. Burning Man rents Frog Pond. Like, when the dude drove over the fence, like, that is our, we're releasing that. That's right. ours. <laughs> so I was like, hey, so someone just drove over the fence of the property that we're leasing. So you might want to, I don't know, call someone. Yeah, that's a that's a thing we have to do something about Yeah. Now. So he called. Uh, no one answers. Sure. So fine. Anyway, so the next day, I'm like, well, out of my hands, whatever. And I'm doing my job. And I'm working uh, building shade on the ranch. And uh, at lunch, we go back to the lunch uh, commissary on the ranch. And what? who do I see? It- One-armed dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's on the DPW work ranch. But he does no, he, he no longer has glasses. But he has a bandage 
on his head. That's so fine. I look at him and I was like, oh, hey, how's it going? And before I get it out, he, his eyes drop away from mine and he walks away. Not saying a single word. And I was like, oh, that's weird. So it turns out he showed up earlier in the day, went to the ranch manager and was like, hey, uh, I only got one arm, but I can do the work of someone with four arms. <laughs> <laughs> and the ranch, the ranch manager, he's game. He's like, cool, we got all kinds here. We get some weirdos. It's DBW in fucking 2003. Uh, we, uh, if you're willing to do work, <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> And so he's like pitching his tent. And there's this other kid who is his first year at DBW too. And he's just pitching his tent. And they're right next to each other. And, you know, the little kid is named Sobi, which I don't know if you remember the 90s or early 2000s, but it used to be just a drink. Oh, I drank me a lot of Sobi. Yeah, it's cute, yeah. right? And that's what this kid was. He was cute. And so he's sitting there. And one armed guy is pitching his tent. And one armed guy is like, hey, so what's your story? And Sobi's like, I don't know. I just love Bernie, man. <laughs> I imagine that's what his name, what his, uh, what his voice sounds like. But, uh, I, you know, memories are weak. He never came back, and I don't blame him. Um, <laughs> one armed guy is like, well, here's my story. Um, I used to be an army ranger. And the kid's like, oh, that sounds neat. And the guy's like, no, no, army ranger is like, that's a serious thing. Do you want to see my army ranger handbook? And the kid's like, uh, sure. So one arm guy like gets his army ranger handbook and hands it to him. Turns out the cover's been ripped off and it's soaked in blood. Nice. Yeah, interesting. And uh, so the kid's like looking at it. He's like, oh, this is nice. And like looks at it. And the guy's like, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's a little, um, there's a little thing on the. It might be blood. It's a, uh, well, uh, yeah, I killed a guy last night. Nah, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> and the kid's like holding the book, and he's like, and the guy's like, nah, really. I did kill the dog. Oh, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. And the kid's like, you can have your book back. Um, That's anyway, as unfair so, as... so I'm from Portland, and I just like Burning Man, <laughs> and I wanted to help. Uh, it sounds like you're really interesting, and I'm not sure how to leave right now. <laughs> Anyway, so he goes to, like, the powers that be on the ranch. And it's like, oh, this guy kind of creeps me out. And they're like, ah, noob, you fucking hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You're just not used to hardcore motherfuckers. <laughs> and so Will Roger and a couple other people are like, oh, we'll go talk to him. So Will Roger goes and talks to him. He's like, uh, hey, so, you know, what's going on, buddy? Uh, we heard, I don't know. You're, you're saying some weird shit. You're kind of, I don't know, you're creeping some people out. What's going on? And the guy's like, what do you mean? You trying to kick me out of here? And Will Rogers is like, oh, what's going on? And he's like, you kick me out of here, I'll fucking kill you too. I fucking killed a guy last night on the fucking side of the highway, you motherfucker. And just like starts threatening Will Roger, which back in that day, Will Rogers still drank. And he was still like the guy that ran DBW. It used to be just one dude. And uh, he's an ex-biker and he's, you know, he's a rough dude. And a lot of the people on DPW were rough dudes. And a lot of people had a lot of guns. <laughs> So at that point, Will Rogers is like, oh, okay. It's like that. Well, you just calm down. It's all good. You can stay here. I'm just going to go uh, talk to my friends over here. Uh, you just hang tight. And so he leaves. As a guy with a posse, I will go check with my posse <laughs> right. now. <laughs> and be like, you wait for a moment. Uh, and so at this point, we still think the dude is just tweaked. He's just, sure. he's just fucking stupid. I still had no idea this was going on. I was just somewhere else. All the people that saw him the night before had not related the story. <laughs> So all the people that are operating on this guy did not know that there was a story of the last night. So we get a, a medic to come over and say, like, hey, it looks like you have a bandage there. Let me help you with that. And so he's like tending to this guy's uh, head wound. And he's like, oh, this is a pretty deep head wound. Oh, it looks like you got clocked pretty hard. And the guy's like, oh, I just ran into something. And the guy's like, oh, that's a really nice knife. And one armed dude is like, yeah, it is a really nice knife. You know, I got it from blah, 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 blah. And he pulls it off his belt and he hands it to the medic. And the medic's like, oh, yeah, sweet. And he looks at the knife and he just holds the knife behind him while someone walks behind him and grabs the knife. And then he says, oh, that's a really nice forerunner you got there. Can I see the keys? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, check out these keys. Okay, so key, key, key. Why do you want to? And the guy's like, okay, I got the keys. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And he hands it behind <laughs> him and someone walks behind him and grabs the keys. And now the guy's there. <laughs> with no weapon and no vehicle. And uh, meanwhile, people are like calling the Gerlach sheriff, who at that point was a complete drunk, 
So I hear. I don't know. We could edit that out if that's a fucking issue. But as far as I know, the guy was drunk and was not I, answering the phone. The name of our podcast is our waiver. As far as I know. So we called Reno, and the sheriff was like, well, that sounds pretty fucked up. How about you just keep him there, and I'll be there in four hours? And we're like... <laughs> well, I guess that's how it is. <laughs> okay. Are you, are so we're you, just sitting there doing a little sure song and job? dance in front of this dude, like, hey, stay here. It's all good. We're all friends here. And at some point, he's like talking to the medic, and he's like, yeah, I mean, he pissed me off, and I had to, I mean, he came at me. And uh, and the medic's like, yeah, tell me more. Tell me more. What did, what did he do? What did he do? What did the dog do? And And the guy's like, well, I mean, the dog lunged at me, so I had to kill it. And like, you know, I, so I stabbed the guy because, you know, he came at me because I killed his dog. And I, oh, I think I need a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just stopped talking. <laughs> wow. And then the sheriff showed up and handcuffed him uh, wrist to ankle because that's what you do with a one-armed <laughs> <little> guy. <laughs> <laughs> and took him away. And all the people that were, like, making fun of the, the the crazy dude that was talking a bunch of smack were like, oh, that's weird. That's weird. And then all of us that were, like, at Frog Pond the night before were like, uh, I think we just, like, met that dude, before, <laughs> like, two hours before he died. Oh, this is... Well, yeah, funny is subjective. Out, yeah, and then they, they they found his body on the side of Highway 34 Holy with the dog. Hell. With the dog, and that's wow. what people were pissed off about with <sighs> the dog. They're like, "Well, he killed a guy. Well, whatever. Guys are stupid. Wait, he killed a dog? Yikes! You like that's, how I started that story? Like, no, nah, it's calm? intense. Yeah, <laughs> no. <nah, it's... laughs> I usually start it with like, "Oh my god, I met a war on killer," and then people are like primed <laughs> for it. Accuracy Third is produced by Accuracy Third. And that means Rex, D Day, and Bat. Accuracy Third is distributed under the Creative Commons license. Please feel free to reference, share, link, cut up, or enjoy. Accuracy Third is edited by Beth, who is great. If you'd like more information about Accuracy Third, visit our website, find us on the Facebook, tweak us on the Twitter. And if you'd like information about the bands that we've featured on our podcast, please go to the podcast music page of our site at www.accuracythird.com. Accuracy Third is a compilation and a collection of the stories you tell us. We need you to submit your stories so we can keep sharing them. Come to our website, accuracythird.com, click on the share link, and you can come and be interviewed by us, you can share stories that you record yourself, or you can send us written text for us to read. We want to get your voice on our show. Experience first, leave no trace second, accuracy third, make sure all your poop goes in the porta potties fourth. Oh God, can you move that one up? Don't put your tampons in the porta potties <laughs> fifth. And to that one asshole who once threw a raw chicken into the porta potties, in 2003 or 2004. Fuck, man, handle your shit.